I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This past Wednesday, after Cindy, David, and I wrapped up a rainy Stations of the Cross, we moved into our Lenten study time. And it was a fruitful discussion as we made our way through the first sections of the Catechism. We covered human nature, God the Father, and the Old Covenant. Towards the end of our discussion, I asked everyone to think about how we might connect the Old and the New Testaments. I believe it is one of the hardest issues to reconcile for us Christians. For me, it means always taking the Old Testament as the very foundation of the New Testament and looking for ways in which they are intertwined. Because sometimes we forget that Jesus did not write the New Testament. The Old Testament would have been the only scripture that Jesus would have ever known. And he knew it very well. Jesus was Jewish, which is also something we still seem to have to reinforce. And finally, we must remember that the God of the Hebrew Bible is the same God of the entire Bible. There is no angry Old Testament God and loving New Testament God. Just one God, the whole way through. So let's jump into our readings and see what we learn about this Old Covenant that we discussed on Wednesday evening. For the past few weeks, we have been moving through Genesis. God created everything, and then we failed to meet our end of the deal and got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Then we ran in the muck for a while, and God got pretty upset about it. And so the rains came, and Noah built his ark. Then God made a covenant with Noah, and the rainbow was the sign of that covenant. And then the waters receded, and Noah's family did some things that left God with a theological face palm of sorts. Then we have the Tower of Babel. And after that story, the narrative of Genesis switches to focus on God's relationship with one couple, Abram and Sarai. And their children remain the focus of the rest of the book of Genesis until the death of Joseph in Egypt. In this relationship, God tells Abram that through him, all nations will be blessed and this and that this covenant will be everlasting and the sign of this blessing will be that sarah who is old and her womb is barren will have a child god is telling abram that through this covenant all nations which is which means all people of the world shall be blessed. Now fast forward, if you will, to one of my favorite books of, of the Bible, Romans. We have Paul being devoutly Jewish, drawing upon the covenant with Abraham and God in his theological dissertation on God's righteousness that we call the book of Romans. Paul argues that the covenant with Abram is present all the way 
through Jesus. That God is faithful to God's promises. And God pro promised Abram that the covenant would be everlasting and all-encompassing. And that that has taken place through Jesus Christ. In fact, Abram's covenant is passed through from generation to generation, not because of the law, but through faith. And it is Jesus's faith that makes us able to stand before God as beloved children. Paul's point in Romans is that through Jesus' faithfulness to God, we receive the new covenant. Remember, Paul is writing this to Jewish and Gentile Christians in Rome before there is ever a gospel written down. He's trying to explain how the entirety of the law and faith are summed up in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ through God by the Holy Spirit. Like Jesus, Paul draws heavily upon Hebrew scripture to make his point. And here in this section of Romans, we find a subtle statement that is a key to understanding this section. It is in his statement about Abram's strength and faith, despite his whole old body and the barrenness of Sarai's womb. The Greek word Paul selected is not barren. It is dead. Sarai's womb is dead. But it is a particular version of the word dead that Paul only uses one other time. The only other time Paul uses this word is to describe Jesus on the cross. Sarai's womb and Jesus' body on the cross. The same Greek word for dead. God made a covenant with Abram to bless all people. And the sign of that covenant was that life was brought out of death in the birth of a son from a dead womb. A new covenant was given to us through Jesus Christ. The sign of the new covenant is life brought out of death in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. God is faithful to God's covenant. From Genesis to Jesus and beyond. God's promise is not that we will be happy. It is not that we will never suffer. But God's eternal covenant with us all is to bring life out of death. So I invite you to join us this Wednesday in our virtual cafe as we explore more deeply this new covenant brought to us through the Son of God. Amen.